So a company called Fanata reached out to me and they asked if I wanted to try out one of their new enclosures. So they went ahead and sent me their box number two. And it is huge. Here it is. So this is Fanator's box number two, and it is an enclosure for 3D printers. After speaking with the guy who sent me this box, I explained to them I only had an A1 Mini at the time, but I had recently just got the A1. So today we're gonna try out 3D printing some models using more difficult filaments like ABS to see whether or not this enclosure actually helps our A1 and A1 Mini when 3D printing with those difficult filaments. So the company's called Fanator, and this is their number two box. This thing is actually very well built. Uh, all the materials are made out of wood. We've got acrylic. Uh, they say that they also use PVC, which I'm assuming is maybe for some of these parts here. They're also using aluminum for the side rails here for the enclosure. Also, they've included some electronics within this enclosure. So what you have is a HEPA filter with a fan and also a light. They're all gonna be powered by a USB-C cable. Now, this box is really big, especially if you're gonna put something like the A1 Mini inside of it. So, in this case, it's actually 585 millimeters wide, 610 millimeters deep, and of course, 570 millimeters tall. So, you've got a lot of real estate to work with. So, this is definitely big enough to carry my A1 and also my A1 Mini, no problem. The doors swing open very easily. They close magnetically, which is really nice. The handles feel premium because they're made of machined aluminum. They are painted black. They have a nice grip to them. They open very nicely and they close very easily as well. Also, the light inside of here is bright enough to where you can see your prints in the daytime, nighttime, no problem. It illuminates pretty much everything that you're printing here. They've included is a little temperature sensor and hygrometer so you know exactly what the humidity is inside the enclosure as well as the temperature. This can be set to Celsius and Fahrenheit. Now, coming into the side of the box here, you'll see that there is a little cable port that they give you so you could run cables in and out of the box. They also send you some extra pieces of acrylic that will fit in and seal those areas if you're not using them. Coming up over here, we have also the side of the box that has a little opening that will allow you to either close it up if you want to and you're not using it, or you can run Bowden tubes through it to your printer. Then coming onto the back side, we have two acrylic openings that allows you to run a power cable through. And then coming around to the other side right here, we have that same Bowden tube opening and an additional cable port that you can go ahead and close up with acrylic. I've just closed it up very crudely. You can go ahead and put it in there where it's nice and flush with the rest of the side panel if you choose to do so. On the right hand side, we have the USB-C port where you can go ahead and plug in power to power on the fan switch and also the light switch. They're both touch activated, so all you have to do is lightly touch it and they will turn on. Above that, we have the Bowden tube opening as well. And you can go ahead and 3D print extras if you need to. It allows you to run your filament from the top of the enclosure down to your printer so you can go ahead and print with your filament outside of the box. The assembly of the enclosure was very simple. This is actually a little bit easier than assembling something like IKEA furniture in my opinion. The process didn't take longer than maybe 20 minutes. If you do have any issues putting this enclosure together, reach out to Finator. They should be able to answer any questions. If you want to get the box number two, just know that that that's going to be the larger of the two boxes that they offer, box number one being slightly smaller. The great thing to have these open printers in an enclosure like this is that it's going to help prevent dust from accumulating on top of your printer. It's also going to prevent things like cats from knocking into your printer while it's printing or other people like curious children um, or just human error touching your print while it's printing. So having an enclosure is nice and it provides that little layer of protection from any kind of foreign objects from messing up your print. Also, what's great about having it in an enclosure is that if you have something like an air conditioner vent right over the print, when your AC turns on, it's actually gonna cause your print to cool down a lot faster than it's supposed to or than it would like to. 
And because of that, you're gonna have a little bit of warping, shrinking, and things like that on your 3D print that you're not gonna really want. What's also great by having the HEPA filter is you're gonna prevent contaminating the rest of the room so long as you keep the fan on and the HEPA filter installed. Now, it's not gonna remove that toxic smell and all VOC, so it's very important that if you're printing things at all, you should really be printing in a well-ventilated room or have some kind of air filter that is constantly cycling the air and preventing any kind of harm to you. Now, with some of you that already have an A1 Mini, you probably already know you cannot print with ABS using Bamboo Slicer because there's some kind of software block within the printer that prevents you from being able to print things like ABS and nylon. So what I did is I created a new print profile that told the printer that this is actually PLA, but I'm printing it at a much higher temperature and just a little bit slower than PLA, so we, we can have the printer to print this ABS filament like it was ABS, but thinking that it's PLA. Now, for whatever reason, Bamboo Lab decided that the A1 can print things like ABS. So I don't have to trick it by putting some kind of PLA filament that I've created in order to trigger it to print ABS. This thing's gonna print ABS without having any kind of issues with the slicer. All right, with that said, I've already started printing some objects outside of the enclosure using ABS. I didn't buy new ABS for this test. I went ahead and used the ABS that I already had on hand. So that was the ABS that I used to print the Voron 2.4 that I have over here on my left, but your right side over here. There's plenty of space inside of the enclosure to put things like your A1 Mini. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'll show you one of the first problems that I had after I built the enclosure. The A1 Mini uses this type of power cable that isn't removable from the actual printer itself. So it's not gonna fit through the little hole or gap here that they've included in the box number two. So what we're gonna have to do instead is we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the two screws in the top here on the top part of the enclosure. And we are going to open it up to allow us enough space to move that cable through the bottom part there. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that we've loosened the top a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and just slide up the panel just a little bit and then boom. We can go ahead and pop it out and now we can run our cable through. Now, when the A1 is placed inside of the box two, it takes up a pretty good amount of space inside of the enclosure. You definitely wanna go with box two as opposed to box one. Now, unlike the A1 Mini, you can actually remove the power cable from the back and you can actually fit it directly in here without having to open up the enclosure. Now, if you do wanna put in these little enclosure acrylic panels to go ahead and seal it off more, you still will have to go ahead and open up the enclosure and do it the way you did before so you can fit those panels inside. And if you couldn't already tell by now, the filament stand that comes with the A1 is not going to fit inside of the box two enclosure. So just know that if you do decide to get a box two enclosure, for the A1, you're not gonna be able to use the filament stand that's here, but I'm pretty sure you won't care because you can go ahead and just download and 3D print many, many other files that will allow you to hold filament on top. All right, so we finished all of the testing for the multiple different benches we printed in ABS, and I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really see too much of a difference, which is so disappointing to me because I remember when I was building my Voron 2.4, I only had a Tron XY XS 5A Pro. And in order to print all the parts for my Voron, I went out and I bought a Home Depot box just to help maintain the temperature so I can print all the parts as nicely as possible. So I'm not sure exactly what happened with this experiment, but I'm not seeing the same type of warping that I would normally see, or should I say how I used to see when I was printing on a different type of printer. So it really begs the question, who is this enclosure for? Well, I will say this, while we were doing the prints and the testing, I did notice a significant decrease in the amount of fumes I was smelling on prints that were printing in the enclosure itself. So I really think that the HEPA filter did a good job filtering out a lot of the smells that you would typically be smelling if it was just printing in open air. So if you're concerned about having these types of smells and possibly coming into contact with some articles that normally comes from 3D printing, this wouldn't be a bad purchase. I'm not gonna tell anybody to go out today and buy an enclosure for your 3D printers. However, what I did like, and after using this enclosure for about a month on my A1 Mini, 
I did notice significantly less dust accumulating on my printer. I also didn't run into any kind of issues uh, with anyone knocking into the prints or any of my kids touching the printer while I was printing. Generally speaking, my kids don't touch the prints as they're printing because they've been taught not to. Would I use an enclosure going forward? Sure. I mean, now that I have one, I would probably use it. The only reason why I would have purchased an enclosure is if I was to print some kind of print that required filament like nylon, ABS, or ESA, and I didn't have an X1 carbon already. But from what I've been able to test with at least ABS on the A1 and the A1 Mini, it seems like the difference in quality that you're going to get when printing with ABS isn't a whole lot using an enclosure versus not using an enclosure. I will say this, I did look at the pricing of other types of enclosures online and you can find other enclosures for a lot cheaper. However, you're not gonna get the same type of build quality with other enclosures because those are gonna be made of nylon or some kind of material or fabric on the outside. With this, you really are getting what feels like a premium product. However, this does have its drawbacks. Um, I was, I was kind of disappointed that they didn't think to create a little attachment that they can add to this that routes all of the ventilation through a duct, maybe to another area outside of the room, through a window or something like that. Also, I wish that they were able to figure out something with this enclosure that would allow us to easily connect an AMS light to maybe the side or on top. Unfortunately, the cable for the AMS light just isn't long enough, or maybe if there was a, a hole that was closer to where you would put the printer on the inside, that you might be able to use that accessory cable coming from the AMS light to be able to plug it into your A1 or A1 Mini. So yeah, I mean, overall, I'd say this is a great enclosure. If you're in the market and are trying to get an enclosure for your 3D printer, definitely go check out Finator. Uh, I have links to the Finator box too, which is in the description of this video. There is no difference in price, whether you go through my affiliate link or not, it doesn't affect the price for you and it benefits me. All right, guys, so that's really the end of the review. This is one of the first review videos I've ever done. If you liked how I did this review video, let me know. And if you didn't like it, of course, let me know in the comments what I could do to do better in the next review. If you know somebody is in the market for an enclosure for their 3D printers, go ahead and send them this video. Maybe they'll want to buy this one or something like it. And of course, if you want to watch other content that I'm making, make sure you subscribe. And usually at this part of the video, I'm just kind of like not sure what to do. But anyways, thanks for watching.